didn't want to speak to me. He didn't want to speak to me. Fair enough. I don't want to have a shout, mate. Abbas, we have a question for you. I'm alright, how are you? Yeah, not too bad. Yeah. Good, good. Shall we have a talk? I'd like to ask you a question. Yeah, about, yeah, okay. about the Quran and its claims. Okay, uh, is there a very many questions? No, it's a singular question. Okay. Singular question. Right, yeah. That that I think is something that because of the way that it is phrased. Yeah. I'll see if I can answer that. If I, sure. if I can't then maybe I can answer you later on detailed question. Yeah. Fair enough. And I use uh, Abbas uses the Quran as his justic. Yardstick, yes, Yardstick. yes, okay. of yeah. course. As a Muslim. But you're not Quran only. only. Of course not. Yeah. Okay. Which, which uh, leads me to a different question, but that's not the question I want to ask you today. <laughs> okay. The question that I want to ask you today. How you being about though? How you being? Are you being okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm fine. No problem. Yeah. Excellent. You're gonna make a good Christian one day. Yeah, we so love I'm, all, I'm already a Christian. I follow Jesus in the, in the true sense. Brilliant. He's Follower of Christ is a, is a Christian, so I'm Fantastic. a true follower of Christ as a, as a Muslim. Fantastic. Okay. What he says is the true name. Okay. So, so Hi. in the Quran, in Surah Seven. Hmm. Verse 157, it reads thus. Those who follow the messenger, the prophet who can neither read nor write, whom they find written with them in the Torah and the Injil. He commands them for al rahuf and forbids them uh, from al Now, the, 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 the verse seems very clear to me. It's making a statement about the Sahaba. The Sahaba were following Jesus, uh, Muhammad, and, this, and, and the Sahaba were able to find G, uh, Muhammad in the Injil. So my, my, my question is a very simple one. Where in the Injil can I find Muhammad? Why did you say Sahaba? By name? By name or indi by indication? By prophecy, yeah. Because yeah. Jesus is a mention in the Old Testament, yeah. but we know he's there. You believe that, right? What's that? You believe that Jesus is prophesied in the Old Testament? Yes, for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so as in Messiah, not by really? name. Yeah. So, where, where do we find? Where do we find? In the Injil. In the Injil, prophecies of Muhammad. Prophecies of Muhammad, or just indication that that yeah. prophecies of Muhammad. For example, in John, isn't it? When they came and it says, "Ask John the Baptist, are you the are you Elijah?" He said, "No. Are you the Messiah? No. Are you that prophet?" Okay. So that prophet is indication to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Well, hold on one second. Hold on yeah. one second. Would you agree that the, the the Messiah is a prophet? Yes. Yeah. And you would agree. You would agree that. According to Bible, Messiah is a prophet. You would agree. Yeah, you yeah. would agree that rhetorically people can double down on something, so they can talk about they can talk about the same person using different terminology, but referring to the same person. Not in this context. Definitely so let's not. pull it up. Which, which passage are we going to? You should know better, isn't it? It's in John. Go on. Uh, I don't uh, remember by top of the head, but let's, I can. That's fine. That's fine. Let's find it. Find it. You don't memorize it? No, no, we don't. We don't. We don't have a, a need to memorize this. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Let's see. Let's see this one first. So, in the Gospel of John, where, where do you want me to go, bro? Where do you want me to go? The one he's asking questions is John the Baptist, isn't it? The Jews came to him and asked him. I don't think it's in John. Is it? I thought it, that was in one of the synoptic gospels. Okay. Maybe I'm wrong there, so it's in the synoptic gospel. I think it is. I could be wrong. So I'm happy to go wherever you want. I just need you to help me find it. That particular verse I'm talking about. Yeah. How you keeping up? Yeah. I'm very well. I'm very well. So this this prophecy, where is it, bro? Where are we going? Yeah, I think it's Mark, isn't it? Where, I thought it was one in the synoptics. Yeah, Mark, which Mark. which passage in Mark? Which passage in Mark? Don't know your Bible. I'm I'm asking in which passage in Mark. It doesn't prove anything. There's plenty of Muslims that don't know their Quran. So what have you proven by that argument? Nothing. I mean, do you, can you read Arabic? Yeah. You can speak Arabic? Yeah. You understand Arabic? Yeah. Do you think most of the Muslims do? No. So that means most of them don't know their Quran. There we go. No, no, they do. They, do. they, 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 they really don't. They can't, they can't read Arabic. So where is this passage from? You put me on the spot, I just quoted it, but I don't remember the top of my head. Well, Elijah, I'm just looking, Elijah mentioned... 
Is it eight? Is it mark eight? Let's have a look. Oh, it's about, yeah, yeah, it's about, um, hold on. This is hell. It's about, actually, it'll be earlier. I think it'll be, no, no, no. Yeah, you found it. No, this is not, this is not. I think actually it's earlier. It's kind of like, should be early, right? Start, it started with John. And John is the one that people are following to begin with. And then they move over. And I is John 1. John chapter John, 1. John 1, 21, I believe, yes. Okay, let's have a look. John 1. John 1. Oh, yeah, 21. 21. Okay. So this is a this is a verse that talks about Muhammad. Yes, that, that prophet okay. is talking about Muhammad. Let, let, let's just read it. Let's just read it. Would you agree with me that the, the, the chapter of John, chapter 1, is talking about Jesus? Well, whatever he's talking about, yes. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it's a Christian book, so it's, of course they're not talking, talk. Chapter 1 is talking about Jesus all the way through. So then we get to Only verse Jesus. 21. The testimony of John. What is the testimony of John? This is the testimony of John when the Jews sent to him priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? And he confessed and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. They asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, no. Then they said to him, who are you so that we may give an answer to those who sent us? Okay. Now, how do you get Muhammad from that? Yes. Yeah. The Jews yeah, came, right. the Jews had something. I'm talking to him, bro. I'm doing, I'm doing a, no, you can talk together. Yeah, I'm talking to him. You can answer with him. No, I'm asking you. Because I'm asking you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, Jews had something in their mind. They had yes. some knowledge. Yes. They know there was a Christ to come. Yes. So they asked him, are you the Christ? Yes. He said, no. Yes. Jesus. Then they thought there was Elijah to come as well. Yes. So they said, are you the Elijah? No. Yes. So when they already confirmed that Christ is not Christ, the, the, the reason they ask is the prophet, because yeah. they know the prophet is different yeah. than the Christ. Yeah. Because Christ by default is a prophet. Yeah. When you ask the Christ, so what was the reason they're asking when he's not Christ? Why they ask him if you are you that prophet? Yeah. Because according to you, Christ is a prophet. Yeah. The Jews probably know very well. Christ and John the Baptist was a prophet. John no, the Baptist was also a prophet. Yeah. That's, that's what they ask him. But they ask John the Baptist because he's the spirit of Elijah, isn't he? John the Baptist. John the Baptist is the spirit of Elijah. Do we need to move? No, no. Okay. So John the Baptist is the spirit of Elijah. Yeah, right. Yeah. The yeah. spirit of Elijah. Yeah. So that's why they're saying they're not saying literally Elijah is going to come. So Elijah, John the Baptist was the spirit of Elijah, Christ, Jesus, and who is that prophet? Great, Abbas. So there are three different. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Hold on one different second. Hold on one second. But what what you what you've just admitted to is that these questions don't need to be understood literally, do they? Because when they said, "Are you Elijah?" You said, without any prompting from me, he's and it's certainly not. biblical, yeah, yeah. that he's not Elijah, but he comes in the spirit of Elijah. That's right, yeah. So these Which questions to the these, these questions don't need to be interpreted literally. Yes and no. Thank you. Right. If they're not interpreted, if they don't if the one about Elijah is not to be interpreted literally, I put it to you that when they're coming to that prophet, yeah, what they're referring to is that prophet that is likened to Moses. Which is Muhammad Right, hold on one second. Hold on one second. Right? That prophet that is like unto Moses, yeah, doesn't mean it's Muhammad. Yes, it does. One second, one second. Because what we're looking for is a verse in the Bible that taught the verse in the New Testament that identifies Muhammad. Not a, a passage in the Old Testament. No, you are going you are quoting like prophet yeah. like Moses. A prophet that like goes Moses. back to Old Testament. So right. that's why I said that. So but the point here is Hey, okay, it's not literal. Elijah is not literal, but they are three distinct personalities. That's why they ask, "Are you the Christ?" No. Are you the Elijah? No. Are you that prophet? So Christ is always on, already been supposed to be a prophet, yep. but he's not Christ. So no point asking Christ again as a prophet. Who, who was? Who was? Who was? Right, a couple of a couple of points. Firstly, this passage can be interpreted in multiple different ways because. I would say linguistically, from a literary point of view, as we've seen with Elijah, the questions are not necessarily literal in the answer. Because John the Baptist does, is I, I the one who comes in the I spirit of Elijah. I got that. But now, what I'm saying is there are three distinct hold personalities. No, hold on one second. Hold on one second. The prophet that is being referred to 
is, I believe, the one spoken of in uh, Deuteronomy, that prophet like unto Moses. But that, that, that prophet can also be the Messiah. The Jewish mind at that time may have seen these possibly as distinct figures. Yeah? Yes, Most knowledgeable yes. rabbis, Jews, firstly, they didn't know that Christ is the prophet. Firstly, firstly, we, they, the Jews, many Jews at that time rejected Christ as the Messiah, did they not? They did. With Jesus. Right. As the, as the, the, the leading teachers of the law, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the priests. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so appealing to their authority doesn't work because they denied that Christ is the Messiah and we believe Christ is the Messiah. No, I'm not agreeing whatever they say. I'm saying the concept they carry when they came to ask questions John the Baptist. Yep. The concept they carry, the, the concept was three distinct personalities they were looking for. Yes. One of them was Christ, yes. who they already know is supposed to be a prophet. Yes. And then the Elijah, yes. who didn't come literally by the spirit of John But the they Baptist. expected him to come literally. That's why they asked the question, Elijah. Okay. They, so they were in error there. They were in error. They were in error there. Yeah. But and they were in error. So what I'm saying to you is, they were in error in their understanding of the prophet. I agree with you. They're asking three questions, three distinct questions, three distinct questions about three distinct persons. That's right. But we establish. We establish. One second. So yeah, let's move on here, because I think they're going to burst into a fight. Over there. So, so that's okay. right. We, we, we're, we're looking at their words, yeah. but we know immediately that they've already got something wrong. Yes. yes. Yeah. When they talk about John the Baptist and Elijah, so appealing to their authority is now looking dubious. I agree with you. They're asking three questions, but they're asking the wrong question because the prophet in Deuteronomy 18, yeah, which you're saying is Muhammad. Yes. And we'll go to that. Yeah. yeah. Isn't isn't a separate person. That prophet that is like unto Moses is the Messiah. Well, I disagree with you. Okay, right, you would disagree with that. What's the similarity yeah. between Jesus and Moses Brilliant. as the prophet? Fantastic question. So let, let's Let go. us deal with that John first, because, yeah, yeah, yeah. because I, I, I'm just saying that this, even though they were wrong about the Elijah coming literal, yes. but they were right that he's a distinct person, which comes in the form of John the Baptist. John the Baptist in spirit was Elijah, meaning he's a distinct person. It's not like nobody, or it's just a concept. So John the Baptist is, in spirit, is Elijah. So he's a distinct person. Christ is a distinct person. Yes. But they know that Christ is already prophet, and he say, I am not the Christ. What was the reason they had to ask the question, are you that prophet? Yes. When he already said, I'm not the prophet. Yeah, because they, they had a misunderstanding. They didn't understand that the prophet that is like unto Moses is also the Messiah. Well, I disagree with that. that and, yeah. and the they, idea of a prophet and the Messiah being the same person are not contradictory. You believe that yourself. Jesus was the Messiah and, and a And they knew that too. They didn't know that. Clearly. Christ was the prophet. They didn't know that oh. because they didn't know that. They did, firstly, bearing in mind these people, yeah, that go and ask John the Baptist these questions are the same people that reject Christ as the Messiah. So they're getting things wrong all over. No, no, the place. you're confusing two things. Rejecting no, no, no. Jesus as the Messiah. Yes. Yeah, they didn't call him Christ. Christ and Messiah is the same thing. Exactly. So that's you, what I'm just so, saying. So you say they you reject. Being no, no, no. You say they reject Christ as a Messiah. That's the wrong thing to say. My apologies. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. You say yes, Jesus yes, yes, yes. as that's a Messiah. My, my, okay. my so yeah, because the thing is a false man. But they believe the concept of Christ is going to come. They're still waiting yes. for the Christ. Yes. So the Christ is a, is a distinct person which, who is supposed to be the prophet. Yes. Yeah, according to you, that yes. prophet. But John the Baptist is as a form of Elijah, so yes. another distinct person. But my question is, why do they have to ask, are you that prophet, I, I, when he already I'm said? I'm giving you the answer. Pause. They've got it. Pause. Yes, pause. Pause okay. on the answer. Three, two, one. My point is to you, that, yeah. that the people that you're appealing to, that you're saying get it right in these three questions, they get it wrong, is what I'm saying. They got it wrong about who Jesus is because they deny that Jesus is the Messiah, but you believe he is the Messiah. Yes. They got it wrong about John the Baptist being Elijah because you believe that John the Baptist is the forerunner to the Messiah. According to Bible, yeah. biblical yeah. teaching, so, we don't so, say that. We never say that according to the Quran yeah. and Muhammad that John the Baptist was Elijah. According okay. to the Bible, yeah, yeah. that's what they were looking for. So, 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 so they got that wrong. So my point to you is if they're getting all these things wrong, 
appealing to their authority because they ask three separate questions is fallacious because you've got to think about what is this passage about? This passage is about who Jesus is. It's putting Jesus in a context. And that context is that Jesus is the Messiah and John is fulfilling the prophecy of Elijah I returning. Get that. I get that. Preparing the I way get of the that. Lord. That's why I disagree with John. The yeah. idea of John, who's, whoever is the writer, yeah. he's wrong and he has to make Jesus as that because he doesn't believe another prophet to come. So what I'm saying was Jews with concept, Jews came with. Now you appealing, oh Jews can be, they were wrong, so why are you appealing to that? But you Christians do the same thing as well. When they pick up the stones and they say you blaspheme, yes. you agree that they were right because Jesus calling himself God. He was calling so himself yeah, God. Yeah, that's so, how they heard. So, that's so, how they yeah. hear no, so they could be wrong in there. He was never calling himself that. And they thought he was calling himself because they were looking to, to, to kill him. So my point is here, they're not wrong in every single thing. They came with a solid, proper concept, yeah. which was three distinct persons. They were looking, who is this man, John the Baptist? Is he the Christ? He's not the Christ, okay. So we know Christ is a prophet. Yes. He's not the Elijah, okay. Now there was another person was in their mind, yeah. and they says, are you that prophet? And I say, this is a prophecy about Muhammad Sallallahu If they were looking for him, which of course he came later. Okay, right. And we believe in a hadith. There are many Jews, they were waiting for the prophet when he came to Medina, and some of them, Abdullah bin Salam, he became a uh, Muslim just like that, because he was he knew they were waiting for prophet to come. So they were Jews according to Islamic history. They were waiting for the prophet. So this is the prophecy about Muhammad okay. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Except that, okay. except that. This, the, the, the context of this passage, it goes on. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am a voice of one crying in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord. Okay. So if you're, going to, if you're going to identify this one line as being a prophecy of Muhammad, Follow the word take, take, take the context, because the context is John the Baptist is saying he is the one who is preparing the way of Yahweh. Preparing the way of the Lord coming Can himself. Can I say something? I, Hold on one second. Sorry, because sorry. the point of let, the Messiah, me the point of the Messiah, when you when you look at the Jewish concept of the Messiah, this this Messiah is a cosmic figure. He is a cosmic figure who is coming to establish the rule of God on earth, to establish the kingdom of God on earth. Okay? So he's he's a, a cosmological figure. Yes. He isn't just some human prophet. And he's the Messiah. Yep. And he's the Messiah. Yeah. Now, and Messiah is a prophet as well. Exactly. So you're literally, what you're doing is you're literally just taking this one line and discarding the entire context. So what I'm just... Oh, sorry, I, I, sorry, I also just want to address your point about the Jews, what they heard, and then the stoning. Because okay. it is a relevant counterpoint. Hmm. Yeah? yeah? I'm saying that they're asking the wrong question. Well, they've understood the questions wrongly. Yeah? You're saying... And then you're saying, therefore, you can't, you can't base your argument on their presupposition. You're saying, ah, but hold on. They, had, they heard Christ as, as claiming to be God, and that we appeal to the fact that the Jews see Christ's words as claiming to be God. But there's a difference between what you hear and what you believe. Yeah? You have said a number of things, and I've heard them, and I'm addressing them. Mm. But what you believe is very independent from what you hear. You can disagree with what you hear. The question therefore comes... That applies to you as well. There, exactly. Therefore, what, what, what really matters is what are the presuppositions behind the person that's saying what you hear. Yeah? Yeah. Which is why Jesus does say himself that I am God, yeah. and why the Jews were angered by that comment. Because when, when Jesus says, when Jesus says, honor me as you honor the Father, well, who is the Father? God. If you honor Jesus as you honor God, how do you honor Jesus? I'm not well, going to I'm, I'm not going to debate. I'm not going to argue with no, no, you. Just one point I want to make. Yeah. I'm not going to argue with you. Did Jesus you claim Jesus, did Jesus claim to be God in the Bible or not? No. Uh, you can take out some passages, yeah. and I'm not one of those who argue. He never claimed anything. God. Bible did say some things which Jesus claimed to be God. Yeah. And yeah, that's why I don't. I don't trust in Bible. The point here, why I'm appealing to this one line yeah. and one verse is this. Yeah. The, you are appealing me to see the context. Yeah. The context is written by a Christian yeah. who want Jesus to be what he want him to be. Yeah. But I'm saying what concept Jews had when they came to ask question. Yes. Why they ask question when the, the, he's not Christ. Yeah. Christ is supposed to be prophet. So who is that prophet? That prophet, it, to me, my understanding, is not the Christ because Christ, he already rejected John the Baptist. Then I'm the, not the Christ. Yeah. So that prophet is a distinct person 
separate from Christ, and that's my answer to your question. Where is Muhammad in the Injil? This is to me okay. is Muhammad in the Injil. And, and uh, we can be going, going round yeah, circle, yeah. circle, circle. The reason, the reason why I find this unconvincing is for a number of reasons. Mm. Firstly, you know, N.T. Wright in his study of New Testament, Second Temple Jerusalem, and, and Second Temple Judaism. Mm. Anyone who's done even a cursory study of first century Judaism, even just from the Gospels, okay. you'll recognize that the Jews had lots of different beliefs. The Sadducees yeah. denied the resurrection. Yeah. The, the Pharisees believed in the resurrection. There's the philosophers of the world, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. The Herodians, the Sinis. The Herodians supported the monarchy of Herod. Hmm. Lots of other Jews, particularly the Zealots, were against the monarchy of Herod. So the, the Jews were not of one uniformed opinion. Okay. And some of those opinions were clearly false. And I, I am simply putting this into its context, it's clearly false. So if we agree, if we agree that this, because I think there is a point of agreement, that this question is about that prophet referring to Deuteronomy 18. Absolutely. Yeah? Absolutely. Then this is where we need to go next. Let's go. Yeah? Then. But the question, the Quran claims that there's a prophecy of Muhammad in the Bible. This is just. In the Injil, yeah. It's in the Injil. No, this is not a prophecy. This is a question based upon an Old Testament prophecy. Uh, when he said prophecy, he's mentioned. He's mentioned in the Injil. He doesn't say. They said they find him. Yeah, find him. And that's what right. it is. Hold on one second. The, this, this is a question based upon the Old Testament. The Quran is saying that they find Muhammad in the New Testament. Uh, John, this is the mention 16, of Muhammad. 17, what, what? John 16, John, 16. Do you agree with John 16, 17 as being a prophecy I'm of Jesus? Uh, 16, what 17. Does it say again? Let's go. About that he's going to be with you forever and all these kind of things. Uh, I would like I think to me this is more convincing than uh, John 16. What, what he said? You think this is more convincing? Yeah. So you disagree with John 16, 17? Uh, read it to me, then I'll. I'll see. Which verse? John 16. Uh, uh, 16, 13. 1613 yeah. but when he the spirit of truth comes he will guide you into all truth for he will not speak on his own initiative but whatever he hears he will speak and disclose to you what is to come apply this uh, on the prophet okay he hear everything and he spoke accordingly yes carry on please yeah because he mentioned he talking about the person eight times right well the problem with that is the, the term spirit of truth in the Greek is panuma terzalathios. Okay. Panuma is a non-physical being. Fair enough, fair it's a spirit. Enough. So this is but not Muhammad. That is the argument, have, so have, I think you're addressing no, 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 that. No, 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 I'm addressing both. I mean, yeah, we'll okay. come back to Deuteronomy okay. 18. Yeah, yeah. Hold, have, on, hold on. Have anyone seen the, uh, uh, hold on. the Holy Spirit? Listen, listen. The, the panuma, that is a spiritual being. A panuma is not a fleshly being. Okay. So when it says that panuma terzalathios, because alathios means the truth, Panuma Lertaris Alertheos is not talking about a physical human being. Uh, and why, it's talking why, about a spirit. Why you b believe in Greek and it was uh, maybe Aramaic or Hebrew, uh, uh, the, the original Injil? No. Because Injil was... The only Gospels that we've ever found in history have all been written in Greek. Okay. Okay. If, so you're just if wrong. If you answer Greek, some, it might be with the translation Syriac, because... Syriac because... The, 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 the early... The, the Gospels were written in Greek because that was the language of the people. Yeah. But you have a Syriac uh, okay, one. Yeah, it's translated. Yeah. Yeah. Aramaic one as well. Yes, translations. Yeah. 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 Translations, Coptic translations, okay. early Gothic, okay. Slav translations, early Slavic not translations. Not All yeah. translations. Is there Into Latin Hoburis translations. Is not original? What? Hoburis in Aramaic. Is not it, was, it was written in Koine Greek. Uh, that, so that, that's just a fact. So so no one disputes what, that. What I'm, say, what I'm saying, the Quran, uh, Quran say that God uh, revealed the Injil to Prophet Jesus, peace upon him. Uh, Jesus spoke Aramaic and spoke Hebrew, let's say. So maybe there is translation, whoever translated, have it, have it somehow uh, wrong. These because are only when, questions. When, when, you can't base your belief you know, on questions. You've no, got to base your belief on evidence. Yeah, yeah, so mean, you've got to prove that they translated uh, carry, it. Carry on reading. Carry on reading. Yes. Because yeah, he listen. mentioned uh, eight times listen. he. Listen. Yes, exactly okay. he. We believe that the Holy Spirit yeah. is a he. We address yeah. him as a person. Yeah, but he he didn't come with the new law. Listen, and he listen said to what he said. Everybody listen to what he said. He will glorify me. Do you know okay. what the word glorify there is in Greek? Does that mean he give him respect and... Uh... It's doxa. Doxa is worship. Okay, I, I Does disagree Muhammad with you. Does bring people to worship Jesus? No. Because no. Jesus... So this is not, so I'm not going to justify this Wait, argument. Uh, he brings this up. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm dealing with both uh, arguments. Uh, uh, glorify, that means obey and respect and follow his teaching because he was sent... No, to the doxa doesn't mean that. Yeah, yeah, but uh, uh, you, you know... 
Jesus himself Doctor glorify, mean... praise the Lord, his yes, Father. He worships the Father, correct, he worships absolutely. The Father. And the Holy Spirit says that all that he will doxa, he will glorify, okay. i.e. he will worship me, he will bring people to the worship of to Jesus. Which must be. Uh, uh, you confirm it now that Jesus, peace upon him, even himself, he a, was a worshipper. Yes, that means, we believe I have that, a question. That means, the Holy Spirit that means, was already present. Why he say uh, he will not come until I go away? Yes. Why do you have to say that? Because it, it's about it's about the the nature of the Holy Spirit's presence. The Holy Spirit was always working within the world. Yeah, right. But the, the the Holy Spirit, when when Christ sends the Holy Spirit. Yeah. From the Father, who will send the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. One second. Nobody say he will not come until I go away. Yeah, wait, I'm going wait, to. I'm going wait. to address that. I'm going to address that. Listen to this. Yeah. These things I have spoken to you while abiding in you, but the help of the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. Did Muhammad come in the name of Jesus? No. No. So this is not Muhammad. So the Holy Spirit comes in the name of Jesus and brings people to the worship of Jesus. It goes on to say, if it, I'm going to address your point. I'm going to address the Let me the finish. Father. Let me finish. Okay, yes. I let you finish. Yes. In the name of Jesus is what it says. All things that are all things that the Father has are mine. That's Jesus' words. So he's claiming equality with the Father. Therefore I said to you, he takes of mine and will disclose it to you. So everything that Jesus has belongs to the Father, and the Holy Spirit is going to have everything that Jesus has. So Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are all equal. But the uh, but the, the operation of the Holy Spirit is special and particular within the church. That's when the Holy Spirit makes his residence within the church, as we see in the book of Acts. May I say something? Well, my, my, you may, may my I question. say something? You say he will not, until I go away, he will not come. The Holy Spirit was already working. Yes. So th that doesn't answer. Because it's, cause it's, cause it's about in what purpose is he coming? He's coming into the hearts of the believer Which was, to guide the there. church. He was, already there, he was with them, but he wasn't in them. Yeah, but, but according to that? Yes, 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 according yes, to the same verse, he said he will come and condemn the quite, sin of the world. Quite ambiguous yes. uh, Prophet Muhammad, the he whole came context is very ambiguous, to be honest. Prophet Muhammad. Right, but that's what your verse is. Your verse is ambiguous. You're getting this prophet this question. Says, the Holy Spirit is already me. there. We say he's not come until I go away. He will not come. Not that's very ambiguous. Yeah. I will ask the Father. So who's being asked? The Father. Who's asking? The Jesus. Uh, Jesus. And he will give another helper. Okay. Yeah, that's the word advocate. We can translate that word as advocate. Exactly. It, it's the word paraclete. Paracletos. Yeah. yeah. And he may be with you forever. Tell me, is Muhammad with us forever? Uh, his law is forever. So yeah. not Muhammad then. The, the, no, so no, Muhammad no. is not I, I with us forever. Yes. Muhammad. Yes. So Muhammad is with us forever. I, I tell you how. But, no, no. Was, let, let me explain. Let me explain how. The yeah. other one. Let me explain how. You know when uh, what's his name? The guy went to the hell uh, in the next life, and Abraham was there. What's the name of the guy when he met Abraham in Sheol? Yeah. And Abraham said, he said, let me go back to my brothers to warn them. He said, don't worry, the Moses and the prophets are with them. Even though Moses and prophets yeah. were not with them. Yes. Yes. So by law, Moses and prophets were yes. with them. Same way you can apply, Muhammad no. is going to be there with them forever, so the meaning parable, by the law and teaching. So let, let's, let me just correct you, because Jesus is telling a parable. Okay. Yeah. It's the parable yes. of the rich man uh, and the poor man at his gate. That's right. And what he says is they have the law of the prophets. No, he didn't say that. If they don't believe, shall we pull he it up? He said they have Moses and the prophets yes, with them, the, the law. That's an, that's an idiom just for oh. the law of Moses. No, but don't say law, he uh, didn't say law. He said Mo Moses yes. and the prophet. He didn't yes, say so law. that's an idiom for no, the law what, of Moses. No, but the same way you can say Muhammad is going to be with them forever right. by law mm. and teaching. One second, one second. The, 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 your, your, firstly, we'll pull up the passage and we'll yeah. have a look at it properly. I read that passage. Yeah, but, but the, this is an idiom referring to the law of Moses. So this is, why does right? it be idiom? Hold on one second. That he now will be there with them forever. Let, let, let's look at what he actually says about the Holy Spirit. Mm. I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper, another advocate, mm. that he may be with you forever. Mm. That is the Panuma Terzalertios, the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive because it does not see him or know him. But you know him because he abides with you and will be in you. So you asked me to prove that point earlier about the distinction between being with and in. I've just shown it you. Now, he's talking about someone that the, the apostles know already. Did the apostles know Muhammad already? Nope. Did they know the laws of Muhammad already? I can answer so this that. is not I can Muhammad. Answer that when Jesus uh, predicted in Mark 13, then the end of the days when they come, you will see yeah, all these things before it all ends. So he's not talking to, about them, he's talking about the people. The human being will see all these things before it takes place. 
So in the same way, he can say, you will see. So he was not addressing the, the, uh, the companions, his disciples. He's addressing people. No, he says they know. Beings. I'll just read it to you again because he didn't pick it up. Yeah? It says, it does not see him or know him, but you know him. Who's the you being referred to there? So if we take you as disciples, then Mark 13, you have to take you also yeah. the disciples. We exactly. Say, no, but, but it doesn't happen in the time of disciples. The, That's the, the, a disputable the, the point. The sun didn't get dark, That's the a moon didn't stop point. its light, That's a very and the earthquake didn't happen, yeah. and it said it will happen, and you will that see. That is a very disputable point. That's, That's a very disputable you. point. The, the, the you, they know him because he abides with you and will, will be in you. So this is not Muhammad because you've already agreed that the apostles don't yeah, know Muhammad because you are don't the know this the law of Muhammad. It goes on. These things I have spoken to you while abiding with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit... Now, can you show me in Islam, is Muhammad referred to as the Holy Spirit? No, he's not. He's not. Who, who's referred to as the Holy Spirit? Uh, Gabriel. Gabriel. So, so even the very terms that Jesus used can't be applied to Muhammad. Fair enough. The Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. Did Muhammad come in the name of Jesus? No. Whose it, name did he come in? All the Prophet came in with the name of the Father, not of the name of Jesus. But Jesus says that the Holy Spirit will come in his name. Well, you can but say it, he but, it, but, he but Jesus, Jesus uh, said, I go to the, the, the Father and I ask him, to, to send somebody to you. Uh, and uh, Prophet Muhammad, he came with the law uh, which, uh, which condemned the sin and uh, established from that time. Uh, it will be till the judgment day. Okay, so let, let's just deal with this verse. Okay. The verse says, Jesus says, the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name. Who's my name? Who's that referring to? My name. Who's speaking? Well, he's the one who brings this person. I'm asking. I, I live here. Who's, who's my, he, he's abandoning you on this one, bro. No. I want you to answer no, the brother, question. Brother. The scriptures uh, say... Bob, Bob, I didn't quote this one. He brings this yeah, one. Yeah, I agree. And you ask me, do you agree with that? I say, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. So I'm asking you. Let me ask you this question. Jesus says the Holy Spirit whom I the understand. Father will send in my name. Yeah. So whose name does the Holy Spirit come in according to this passage? According to this passage in the name of Jesus. Right. Does Muhammad come in the name of Jesus? Muhammad came in the name of God, Allah, so not Jesus, like then. all the prophets. And G even Jesus, he didn't come to glorify himself. He came to glorify the Father. He worshiped the Father. And when you glorify Jesus, you obey him and you give him his uh, true status so can we as agree? a prophet. Can we agree? Can we agree about what can, I'm saying? Can we agree? Can we agree, therefore, that Muhammad doesn't come in the name of Jesus? Fair enough. Uh, therefore, d is Muhammad the Holy Spirit? No, he's not. There we go. So all of this passage that you're reciting, okay. you're reverting to, is talking about the Holy Spirit. I quoted John 14 over here, where it first uses the term Panuma Terzalerthios. In chapter 16, it uses the term again that you're yeah. saying is about Muhammad, yeah. and it uses exactly the same term, Panuma Terzalerthios. Uh, so it's speaking about the same person. Okay. Who is that person? Okay. The Holy Spirit, okay. who comes in the name of Jesus, okay, uh, not Muhammad. Okay, as the comment section, I will upload because I have so much uh, uh, references at home, I don't have it now. Please, Can we come back to Abbas's argument? Uh, I, I want to say something. Uh, 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 the, criter the, criteria, yes, we do. the criteria of uh, Moses uh, against the criteria or similar to criteria of uh, of uh, Jesus. Can can you tell us, is Jesus is a prophet like Moses? Yes, and Jesus why? is a prophet like Moses. Uh, and I why? will explain That's why. Going to Deuteronomy 18. Okay, good. Yeah. But I just so my point was I John here, 1 21 no. was talking about Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So a, that is where he mentioned in the Injil, and we're going to go back to Deuteronomy 18 because you say that prophet is in mentioned in Deuteronomy yeah, 18. 18, 18 we, I'm it? going to prove that Deuteronomy 18. That's it. That's it. And this is why. Uh, sh shall I give you the reference like a prophet Muhammad is like a prophet Moses? Uh, I give you all the references. No, no, no. Hold I, on. One I second. have nine. Brother, nine, we will nine address that. Uh, let me let me address with him first. Yeah. We, we will, we will go there. Uh, yeah, I have yeah, yeah. nine references. Deuteronomy. Sorry, tired. It's been a long day. <laughs> it's been a long day. I have yeah. nine references which which confirm uh, Moses and Prophet Muhammad. They are uh, exactly the same because Jesus was born uh, not naturally like uh, uh, Prophet Muhammad and Prophet Moses. Uh, uh, Moses came with the law. Uh, Pro Prophet Muhammad came with the law. Uh, Jesus came follower of the law. Uh, Prophet, uh, uh, Prophet Moses, he fought as a warrior uh, to God. Uh, G Muhammad, he fought. Uh, Jesus, he's never right. fought anyone. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use your Did passage. Did you hear what I said? Yes, yeah. I heard what you said. I'm going <laughs> to I'm gonna use your passage simply to, to, to disprove that this We're is We're reading Deuteronomy 18? Deuteronomy 18. And, the, and the, I'm just going to skip to the bit that disproves that this could possibly be Muhammad. Okay, right? 
and it's in verse 19. It shall come about that whoever will not listen to my words, which he shall speak in my name. Mm -hmm. I myself will require it of him. But the prophet who speaks a word presumptuously in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or which he speaks in the name of other gods, the death, prophet yeah. shall die. Put to death, yeah. What was the name that Moses gave to the people of Israel as the name of God? Moses. Yes. Uh, he gave uh, tetragrammaton, four, le four letters. Which is? How is that? How, how do we say that? Four letters, there's no name. It's translated as Yahweh. Yeah, Yahweh. You, you made it into Yahweh. He okay. didn't give them the name Yahweh. Right, so we got he this tetragrammaton. Four, four letters. Right. But it's not Allah, is it? Because it's not Illa. Yeah, but Allah is a God of the Old Testament. Hold on one well. second. Hold on one second. The, what's the criterion? The criterion is that they will speak in the name of the tetragrammaton. Whatever the tetragrammaton is. Okay, well, however we pronounce it. Okay, and let's just leave that hanging. Let's not even debate how we pronounce it. It's just the tetragrammaton. You might have one way of pronouncing it, I might have another. But what, can we agree that the tetragrammaton, the tetragrammaton <laughs> yeah. is not equivalent to Illa, it's not equivalent to Allah. Well, Allah is not the only name Allah has. Okay, so, so which, one, which one is the equivalent to the that, tetragrammaton? That tetragrammaton could be Al Hay Al Qayyum. Really? Yes, Al Hay Al Qayyum. Yeah. The four, four letters, and what's the meaning of Al Hay? Al Hay has the same meaning as Yahweh, do you know that? No, it doesn't. The living. No, it doesn't. The living is the oh, meaning living. of Al Hay. Yeah. Oh, yes. And what's, so, what's, the meaning of, what's the meaning of the tetragrammaton? I am. No, it's not. It is. It's, it's not. not. He actually gives it. It's not. He actually gives I it. am in Hebrew is a hayyeh. Let's let no. Sure. I'm sorry. It actually gives the in in Exodus. We'll, yes, we'll go on then. Let's go to the Hebrew. Yes, what let's Hebrew says? Let's go Hebrew to Exodus. Dictionary. Yeah, no, no. Let's go to Hebrew. Exodus what? It gives it gives the meaning. The Exodus three is it? Mo, then Moses said to God, Behold, I am going to the sons of Israel. What are you reading? I'm reading from Exodus chapter three, verse thirteen. Okay. Then Moses said to God, Behold, I am going to the sons of Israel. And I will ask, and they, sorry, of Israel, and I will say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. Now they may say to me, what is his name? That's right. What shall I say to them? That's right. God said to Moses, That's I am, 14. I am who I am. Yes. And how and is he it in said, Hebrew? And he said, thus you shall say to the sons of Israel, I am has sent me to you. That's verse so 15. that is the name of God. Is that the verse 15 you read in the yes, end? That's, okay. the, that's now, the meaning of it. No, I am. No, no. When you say I am is Yahweh. That's what you say. That's he is. Okay. Yahweh so, is he is. But in Hebrew, how do you say I am in Hebrew? How, well, one second. How do you... He is is what it means. What's the, what's the Arabic name that you quoted? The All Living. Is he is the same as the All no, Living? No, no, no. You say I am is his name. That's what he says. You say, how, how do we translate Yahweh into English? No, you say I am is his name. That's what you said. I'm going to count you on that. You say I am his name. Now we go to Hebrew. How do you say I am in Hebrew? He doesn't say Yahweh. He didn't say Yudhe Wahe for Dr. Grammaton. He said Ehye. Ehye Asher Ehye. I am. Yes. I am. So Ehye Yahweh is, is he is. No Hebrew ever says Ehye is the name of God. Everyone sorry, says Yahweh sorry. is the name of God. People can decide for themselves. Look, Listen to the verse. I'm giving you the Hebrew word. I, and I'm here. reading it right here that's been translated by scholars who are more linguistic than you, I, or anyone here in the So those corner. who are writing Hebrew here and they say Ehye instead of Yahweh, Brother. they are wrong. Look, what Brother. it says here? I am is. Yes. Can you see it? Yes, I am. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Ehye. Ehye. Right? Ehye. Go up, go up, yeah. go up. Yeah. Go in up. the next verse, if you go. Wait, wait, wait. Go to the tetragrammaton. In verse, in verse, in verse. No, the tetragrammaton is in 14. the next verse. So go, go to it. Go 15. to it. Go 15. You mean verse 15? Verse 14. Go, go no, to no, it. No, no, no. This is verse 14. Brother. Yeah, this is verse 14. Right. It says. Right. Would you agree that you're not a linguist? Yes, neither you. No, but yeah. would you agree the people that translated this are linguists? And those who are writing this in the Hebrew, they're linguistic. They're, 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 I, I agree. No, these yeah. are not linguists. You're using what? Bible.com? So those who are writing in they, Hebrew. It's an interlinear. It's an interlinear. So those yeah. who are writing in so Hebrew and they're telling you how you pronounce. And, and how is it translated? How is it translated? Forget the Hebrew. How, is it, how do they translate it? I am. I am. And yeah. what did I translate it as here? I am. Yeah, I'm not. So I'm right. Then. I'm not denying I am. It's Thank not, it's you. Like, but eh, yeah, Great. Is, the Hebrew is eh, yeah. Great. Now no Which one is says eh, yeah. I am. Bob, you're not listening. No one say eh, yeah, is the name of God. Yeah, no, because literally, so, it so is saying, saying that that is the name I'm of God. I'm trying to saying that you you had made it into a name of God no. because next verse gives you the name of God. Shall, shall we read verse the passage? Verse 15 gives you the name of God shall and it gives you tetragrammaton, which says Yahweh. Shall we read the passage? So different. Let's read the passage again because you're simply not keeping up with the logic of us. Okay. Moses said to God, Behold, I am going to the sons of Israel That's and right. I will say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. Now they may say to me, What is his name? So what's the question? What's, what's the, the name? name of the God? Thank you. Yeah. 
and he replies God said to Moses I am who I am he said thus you shall say to the sons of Israel I am has sent me to you so in answer to the question what is his name how should Moses reply I tell you what happened here answer the question how should Moses reply but, the, but the, no answer my question no, 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 no. how should Moses reply okay, okay. how should he reply I'm answering you. I am how should he reply I am how should he reply what does God say your reply well, is? I tell you what happened here no no I want you to answer my no, question I'm telling Abbas. you what happened here because it doesn't add up answer the question Bobby, Abbas. Have to, you have to let me speak what is the answer to the question no, I have to answer okay. the way I want to answer we've got it on to camera to he's not going to answer the I am answering we're not going to his Bible okay question. according to your Bible it's I am let, let but let him uh, explain why let, 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 he's not say, uh, okay. confirming uh, we're all agreed that it does say I am according to my Bible thank you so I'm not misquoting my Bible thank you go on Abbas what happened here? Moses asking him, what do I say who sent me? Yes. God is just telling him simply, I am who I am. Basically, why are you asking me who, who's sending you? I am who I am, meaning I am God is sending you. And the next words he give his name. Next words he say, Yahweh. Tell them Yahweh, verse 15. Now if you see verse 14 and verse 15, if you analyze, the Hebrew is different. What does he, he say? Hebrew in uh, verse 14 say, eh, yeah. What does it say? What's the translation? Eh, yeah, I am. The, I thank am. you. I am. But what's, hang on, what's the next verse says? Go when on it, then, pull okay. it up. Let's look we, at it. We've got verse 15 yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Let's now look the it up. word here is Yahweh. Yeah, and what does it say? Well, how they translate Yahweh? Yeah. Can you see Yahweh here? Yeah, yeah it's there, Yahweh. it's there, it's there. Go what does it say? Yahweh. Okay, what it says? Yahweh. Yahweh. That's okay. how they translate it. No, 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 not only that. Not only that. So it's Yahweh Allah. Bob, you're not listening. Uh, not only that, even how it pronounced, it doesn't pronounce Ahiye. It pronounced Yahweh. So meaning he say Ahiye in the first verse, and the next verse he say Yahweh. So which one is the name? So can I Yahweh is now? the name or Ahiye is the can name? I, can I so reply? I, well, now? last word. Yeah. So when God says I am who I am, meaning he's telling, just tell them I am who I am. Why are you asking my name? Next word he says. I am Yahweh and I'm sending you. So I am is not a name because you want it to be named because Jesus says before Abraham was I am. I am. So you want to make I am as a name. Actually, I am was can I, never can a I name. Now reply. So as you've just seen, using the very source that Abbas used concords with what I am saying. He trans the, the, his sources say the bit that we translate as I am who I am is Yahweh. That is not Allah and Muhammad That's never not used the name. It. No, I didn't interrupt you. But you, but you are, you are lying let me on finish, my behalf. Let me finish. That's not let the name. Let me finish, Abbas. Abbas, okay. let me finish. Otherwise, I'll just start shouting. You know how this goes. So, using your I'm source, not your, level. your sources, the the very source that you're using translates it as Yahweh, and he also translates it as I am. The very two words that I used in my argument about the name of God, and you were saying. So my simple question is. Where does Muhammad use that name? He never uses Yahweh. And then you gave another Arabic name, the meaning of which is the All Living One. The All Living One is not the same as I am. And this is what the passage says. We'll let just me read make it. A point wait, here. wait, let wait, me, wait, wait. Before you final move point. On, let me make final a point. point. Here. This is what the passage says. I think it's really obvious if you follow it. Then Moses said to God, Behold, I am going to the sons of Israel, and I will say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me. Now they may say to me, what is his name? So what's the question? The question is, the question is, what is the name of God? God replies, what shall I, so he says, what shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am, which is Yahweh. And then he says, and, he, and then God said, he said, thus you, Moses, shall say to the sons of Israel, I am has sent me to you. So in answer to the question, what is his name? The answer is, I am. Okay. Thank you. So you, where does you, Muhammad come in the name of okay. I am? You just made a point. He said, Yahweh means I am. Yes, that's what he said. And you showed that. No, 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 I didn't. I didn't. You misquoting me. I am challenging you. The Yahweh, the word Yahweh, the name Yahweh used more than thousands of times in the Bible. One place you show me where the Hebrew say Yahweh and English say I am. One verse. What's one word? Only place it says I am and where it's not Yahweh. What word do you say? Eh yeah. Eh yeah in Hebrew simply means I am. So I'm asking you, I'm challenging you, show me one verse and I and I back down. There thousands of times the word used Yahweh, Tetragrammaton. Not once in English the Yahweh is translated as I am. Always translated either Lord or either Yahweh as verse 15. 
So your claim that I am means Yahweh is wrong. I am is simply meaning Yeh. Yes, I am. That's it. I am. Okay. It's not the name of the God because no Hebrew, no Christian ever says the God's name is Yeh. And that's exactly what the Hebrew says. Why are you ignoring the Hebrew? It does not say Yahweh. It says Yeh. And you making it as Yahweh. So I am and Yahweh is not the same. So let me let me let me just address this point. And I didn't interrupt you. Right? you didn't. I did not. I did not. I did not interrupt you. I did not interrupt you. Okay. So, here's the thing, in the source that he uses, it translates the Hebrew as Yahweh. That's what it says. No. You don't know, you no, you're lying. No, no, no Abbas, I did not interrupt you. Why are you interrupting me? Lie, then. So doesn't. stop interrupting me because as always, I have to raise my voice because Abbas is simply not listening. He showed, show, no, go to the bit where it's translated as Yahweh in the next no, verse. Look, no, no. Go to the, verse 15. Yahweh, Abbas, Abbas. Can you see Abbas. how you Abbas. Can you see how it's pronounced I am in So, Hebrew? thank you. Can you see so, I am when it says yeah, I am? Yeah, but he's not showing you the right bit. He's showing you the wrong bit. Brother, no, 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 no. He's showing can you, you the wrong bit. No, I'm not showing and you the wrong bit. And notice he's interrupting. Can you see I am how Notice Abbas is interrupting. Eh, yeah. Does it say Yahweh? There's another verse that is translated no, no, as Yahweh. I'm, I'm, no, I'm going There's to, another verse that's this translated is as Yahweh. Is it, I'm going to show and it. And it's translated as Yahweh, is it not? This verse 15. Is it translated as Yahweh? Can you see? Is it translated as Yahweh? Yahweh? Pr pronunciation. Thank you. No, no. Does it say translated I am? Translated as Yahweh. No, it's translated no, as Yahweh. No, does it say I am? You know, it's it Yahweh. Yahweh. So Yahweh, no, no. It's translated yeah. as Yahweh. Yahweh is translated as Yahweh. Yeah, but no one's disputing that. But when he says I am. Yes, correct. When he says I am, what is it? The word? Correct. I am. Hey, yeah. It's hey, exactly. Yahweh. So thank so you. So why is it Yahweh as I am? Abbas, why are you That's interrupting? Why are you interrupting? If you'd actually listen to what I have to say I to you. I was just showing the people because yeah, me and you. You're interrupting be, again, them, Abbas. Let them be judged. I listen to you patiently. Okay. You need to listen to me patiently. Glasses, and once again, he's interrupting. Abbas, can you sorry. actually conduct sorry, yourself sorry. with some decency? Sorry, sorry. I expect better of you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so. I will try again to give the answer that I was giving the first time before he interrupted. Using his sources, the words that are in dispute are Yahweh and I am. The answer to the question that God gives to Moses is twofold. I am that I am, Yahweh, and I am, which is the verse that he's disputing. This is the name of God. Yahweh can also be translated as he is. He is. So when God is speaking of himself, he says, I am. So the point of the matter is, the point of the matter is, here's the point. Muhammad never uses the word name Yahweh, ever. And yet one of the names of God in Islam is not I am. So whether we use Yahweh, I am that I am, or just I am, Muhammad never comes in those names. He never speaks in those names. Of all the 99 names of Allah, none of them are Yahweh, none of them are I am, and none of them are I am that I am. So, one second, one second, one second. I am. Is that one of the 99 names of Allah? I am. I said, I said, Innani an Allah. Notice I'm interrupting you. I am, I am, yes. Notice I am. I'm interrupting you. I, I am, I am. So the name of I am Allah. Because what is, I am is not the so name. So this word Allah here. Allah is the name. Abbas, you said it yourself. Mm -hmm. That Yahweh is translated as Lord in English. So when it says, when Bible. a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, what should that be in Hebrew? Tetragrammaton. Uh, Thank you, which is? Yud -he -wa -he. There we go. So not the name that Muhammad uses. No, four letters. So this is no, not no, no, Muhammad. No, 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 we didn't establish that. Four letters can mean anything. You made it as Yahweh. God does only give four letters. But first of, first of all, you you arguing a straw man argument here. You keep saying that I am. Show me where I am the name of God. I am I am arguing that I am given here is not the name. It's just God saying eh, yeah, Then you're arguing here. with God. Because he gives it as the name. Because the next verse he gives the name may, according may, to you. No, he doesn't. Yeah, you got it in the wrong order. May I show you this? May you I got it in the this? wrong order. May Abbas, I, follow may, with me. Oh, Look, may I show Abbas. you this? No, no. Because, well, I, yeah, look, look, he, yeah, he, he, mean he God. Say something, so. Yeah, yeah, God. Uh, right yeah mean people. God. But the uh, way it, it, it translated into uh, eagerly coveting 
fallen desire ruin calamity so uh, at the end yahweh is not uh, the name of god because it's it and jewish encyclopedia adonia or Baal reveal the name Baal as the god of uh, uh, is yahweh and this is uh, read it read it read right it. I, I heard what you said uh, but read it read it read i heard, it what, you said. I heard it. what you said i heard what you said but it simply doesn't stack up we have the term that is translated even by Abbas's source, it's translated yeah. as Yahweh. Which one? Right? Ya the, not worth 14. The Tetragrammaton. Worth 15. The Tetragrammaton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the source you yeah. quoted, it gives the translation as Yahweh. The, the, the name Yahweh, right, that is used universally by scholars, yeah? No scholars disagree with what I am it's saying. A, it's a made up name, you know. Not that. what? It's a made up name. The scholars do not disagree with what I'm saying. It's still so, a made up name. In so Deuteronomy 1818, 18, in Deuteronomy 1818, it gives the Tetragrammaton. It gives the Tetragrammaton. That's right, yes. Right. But the Tetragrammaton how it's is how it's not how it's is never used by Muhammad. How you said pronounced? you said it could be. It could be. That's right. Well it could not be. So your why, argument, why, why could not be? your argument, your argument is flawed Allah because Allah Allah the Allah scholars Allah. translate it as Yahweh. That's your scholars that you quoted from your website. They translate it as Yahweh. Uh, my scholars also do the same. So your scholars, scholars and my scholars agree. And these scholars disagree yeah. with your logic. No, they don't agree. And your, uh, they, they, your, they agree your uh, reasoning. They when it says, what? Yeah, yeah, it's not Yahweh. Anyway, it says when a prophet let's, speaks let's in the name forward. of the Tetragrammaton. I never even argued about how we pronounce the Tetragrammaton. I said, let's leave that hanging. But the fact okay. of the matter is. Let's move forward. Let's, the fact do of the matter is, nowhere does Muhammad use this name ever. That's what we're going to talk about. Do you know the meaning of Yahweh? What it means? It, that, that, that's something that... Okay, that, scholars do say it means the living. No, that's actually something scholars dispute amongst themselves and they give this many... Some, some scholars do this, say that. No, hold on, hold I, on. I have read myself that scholars say Yahweh means it's the a, living. It's a highly disputed but, translation. But do they say that, isn't it? No, no, no. Some scholars do say that. The, this, this is what I've heard. Okay. The way that you translate Yahweh yeah. is I am that I am or he who is or I can um, be what he I is. Be. Yeah? That, these are the translations okay, I am that I am cannot be Yahweh because I am that I am same language with Yahweh You've got to take it, it with say, the linguistics it, it that says, translate it that way then Look, listen to me carefully It says, Ehye Asher Ehye Does Ehye Asher Ehye sound like Yahweh? Of course not, it's a, it's a whole sentence Ehye Asher Ehye I am that I am So you Christians made it into I am that is the name of God God was not giving name God gave name in the next words Anyway Abbas, how do the linguistics How do the linguistic scholars glasses, translate it? I can't it? read the glasses how, how do they translate it? The scholars who translated from Hebrew to English I am the who I am so here I've got the opinion given on paper, black and white, by multiple scholars who study the Hebrew language on one hand, and then on the other hand, I have Abbas. So, sorry, Abbas, what was your qualification in the study of biblical Hebrew? I can reason and use logic. So That's my qualification. That, did anyone else hear that Abbas just said he doesn't have any academic qualification in the study of Hebrew, biblical Hebrew? Do yeah. you have any qualification in the study of Biblical Hebrew? Okay. Right, throw up an argument. Do, no, okay. is it true? Do you have any qualification my in the study of Biblical Hebrew? My point here is... Do, well, wait one second. No, it's, it's relevant to the point. It's relevant because here we've got the opinion of scholars who study Biblical okay. Bob, Hebrew. Bob, Bob, okay. I want I, you to address I, my I, point. I, I get your point. I'm let's appealing say, to scholars. Bob, let's say for address the sake, my point. Bob, let's say for the sake of argument. For the sake of argument. You are that scholar who write it and very knowledgeable. My question to that scholar right now is... Yep. Look, you says... That I am who I am, it, that's the name. But Hebrew here, when it says Yahweh, even right spelling is different. It's a different word. No, no, listen to me. That's this even, bit here. Even, you're getting your, you're getting your I'm asking, mixed I'm up. asking the scholar. That bit is that bit. My question I'm is talking about this bit, which is further Bob, up. I, I'm a Muslim and I do that to Muslim scholars as well. I put them to task as well. Why you write? Scholars can be right, they okay, can be wrong. Ask your question. My question I'll is, pretend to be the scholar. My question is that here, verse 14, Exodus 3 14 says, eh, yeah. Even the writing is different. Yes. And it says, I am. Yes. But the next one, when it says Yahweh, even the writing is different as well. Yes. Writing is different. Yes. And the word Yahweh. So yes. how come, how do you come to conclusion that word Ehye and Yahweh is the same word? How you say it's the same word? When it's saying in Hebrew, it's a different word. Yes. That's my so, question so, to you. So uh, how, uh, how let, you me, let, me, let me answer you. Let me, let me answer you. Because remember, one, you are a scholar. Yeah? yeah, I'm pretending to be a scholar. I'm yeah. not a linguist That's in cool, Hebrew. Help. I'm not no. a linguist in Hebrew. But neither are these two gentlemen. Yes, use your reason and logic. Uh, Abbas, control yourself. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So the fact of the matter is, in this translation, 
I have the opinion of a scholar, not just one scholar, by the way, because when Christian scholars translate the, the Bible into English, they get groups of scholars together who have to agree upon the translation. So this is something that a group of scholars has agreed upon versus the opinion of Abbas. At no, speaker's corner. No my opinion. No, one second, one no second, the words one second. Different. Abbas, why do you keep interrupting? Don't, don't interrupt I did me. not interrupt you. Try to practice some decency. Wow. So, so, the fact of the matter is, Abbas, that the scholars who translate the book that I have in my hand, multiple scholars working together, say that Yahweh is translated as, I am who I am. And the fact of the matter is, they also go on to translate some Hebrew words that you pointed out as I am. These two words are connected to one another. It's like saying he is and I am. They're both connected to the same verb, is. The sense of being, the sense of existence. And all that is happening is that one is saying he is and the other one is saying I am. The translators are capturing the sense of that meaning. That is that God is existence without precondition. Now, what Deuteronomy 18, 18 says, or the passage in Deuteronomy 18, which is really what we're talking about, it actually uses the same tetragrammaton, Yahweh, the tetragrammaton, that is translated here as Lord, because that's a custom we inherited from the Jews, and we Christians keep to that custom. But it can also be translated again as I am who I am, because it's the same word, or you can translate it as Yahweh. What's he talking about? So the fact of the matter is, you have to show me where Muhammad uses this name for him to come, like Moses did, in the name of this tetragrammaton. I don't know if you're doing this just to win the argument for the sake of video. Yes. Yes. I think if for the sake of video you just want to win the argument. Basically, I just show you, I show them as well. Verse 14 when it says eh ye, different word, different pronunciation. The next verse says different word, different pronunciation. But you keep saying it's the same. It's not the same. No, you've ignored my argument. No, no, no I didn't. No, you, I'll you, show you, you, my, my argument you, again is... No, when you say my argument, my opinion... I'll give you my well, argument. You're over me now. You're uh, over one, me. One sentence summary. Practice what you preach. No, no, one no, sentence you're talking, summary. No, you're talking over me. Okay. No, let them finish. No, okay. no, no, no yeah. you can't. Yeah. So, so well, it's not my opinion. I'm not, it's not my... I'm just saying that's exactly what the words are saying. They are different words. Eh, yeah, is not a word name of God and I challenge you. Anywhere in the Bible, 6,000 times Yahweh is used. Anywhere in the Bible, word Yahweh means I am. I challenge you if you show me. Every single time it means anything other than uh, I am. As you say, He is, it means Lord, it means Yahweh. So why are you saying this one I am is Yahweh when the Bible is not saying that? Okay. That's my argument. Okay, cool. Pause, okay. Pause, pause. They forget the name of well, God Brody, because they used to glorify it a lot. So they don't even mention it. Uh, as you said, they mentioned Lord. So they are even scared to mention the name of God. Uh, and this is uh, this is according to, to what you're talking about because there is no, uh, uh, in Hebrew language, there is no definition of uh, Yahweh because there is no J. But Yah means God and Hove uh, translated as I, I, as I told you. Uh, is similar to Baal uh, from to be... Uh, 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 Master al Baali is symbolic to Jehovah, which is Baal. And I will put uh, on the comment section as well this translation. I would like everybody to watch it. Okay, okay so now allow me to reply. Okay, come on. Because the point that is being disputed is that Deuteronomy 18 is talking about Muhammad. Yes. yes. But it says that that prophet, when a prophet speaks in the name of other gods, that prophet shall die. You may say in your heart, how will we know the word of Yahweh? That is what the Tetragrammaton is trans translated as Lord by custom. It's translated by a custom of respect that we don't translate it directly as Yahweh. But the fact of the matter is, regardless of the I am bit that he wants to talk about, Deuteronomy 18 is saying that the one who comes like Moses will speak in the name of Yahweh. So I would like to see Muhammad speaking in the name of Yahweh, or does he actually say Bismillah in the name of Allah? So not Yahweh then. 
and, and so not Yahweh. And no, Genesis yeah, yeah. 1 1 31, you will find the name in Arabic and any Bible of Arabic and Hebrew. The, the Hebrew they know Allah is the name of God. And many scholars and many uh, Jewish scholars they confirm Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is their God. And here uh, I give you why a Prophet Muhammad is uh, the one similar to Wait, 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 no, can wait, I make a point wait, here? Wait, 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 I like, I like to make a point here. Can I? Yeah, but, yeah, but okay. I, 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 but no, then I need to go on, go on, go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. Okay, let me make a point. There's a false assumption going on here. Remember this verse 20 says, but the prophet who uh, presumes to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or who speaks in the name of other gods, that same prophet shall die. He doesn't say he's going to mention my name Yahweh. Remember, because in the Bible, we know the name of God, there are different names of the God. And one of them is Elah. Or in a Aramaic, Aramaic is say Elaha, and, and in Hebrew is say Elah. So who, who is Ela? Ela translated as God. So not Yahweh then? Ah, okay. Yahweh, one of the names of Yahweh is Ela. Oh, wait, wait, but not Yahweh then? Yeah. Yes, that's fine, that's fine. So, so yeah. not, none of the me, word, not yeah. Yahweh. You so over, not in the name of Yahweh. You're talking over me now, actually. Now. You're doing that so again. Not in the name of Yahweh. It doesn't say he's going to come and speak in my name Yahweh. He says yes, it does. He's going to come and so speak exactly in my that. name. Yeah. And so exactly one of the that. name is Ela. And the Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam every single time say Bismillah in the name of Allah. So that's the proof that he's talking about Muhammad. But let's go to the whole context. Why we stuck only on the name of God? Let's go to the whole context. You want to talk about the whole context? Let's one second. One second. One second. Verse 15. I, I just want to. I just want to point so who out. Who is that man? Tell us who's that Moses talking I'm, about. Uh, great. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you, because in the book of Acts, that's the question, really. in yeah. the book of Acts, chapter three, reading from verse 17, it says this. And now, brethren. I know that you acted in ignorance, just as your rulers did also. But the things which God announced beforehand by the mouth of all the prophets that his Christ would suffer, he has thus fulfilled. Therefore repent and return so that your sins may be wiped away in order that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And that he may send Jesus the Christ appointed for you whom heaven must receive until the period of restoration of all things about which God spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets from ancient times Moses said listen the Lord God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brethren to him you shall give heed everything he says to you and it will be uh, that every soul that does not heed that prophet shall be utterly destroyed from amongst the people. Yeah. So, one second. The okay. prophet well, that is over. being yeah, spoken of in Deuteronomy 18 is identified as Jesus Christ in the Bible. Why he said that uh, from your brethren, if he from among the Israeli and Jesus is uh, from the Israeli, why, why he say That's brethren? Fine. Yeah. Because the brethren, it referred to Ismail, Why not from the you? descendant. Why from your the descendant? Because the, uh, uh, the Arab, uh, the Ismaili, they are brother with Yaqub, alayhi salatu wasalam, and they are brother, and that's uh, from uh, the descendant of Ismail came the Prophet Muhammad, alayhi salatu wasalam. And now I will tell you why he is similar to. Now the let Prophet. me address that point. I address uh. it. So, so I don't know. You, you I know. I think you want to talk. So well, let, let him talk because no, it's, not, it's not right if you three people are talking. Uh, wait, wait, wait. You, hey, does everyone here know Joseph the Jew, who comes down here occasionally, yeah. the Zionist? Yes. You've debated him, Joseph the Jew. Yeah, I spoke to him. Yeah, yeah. Do you know Joseph the Jew? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. No. So there's a Jewish guy called Joseph. Yeah. He's a Zionist, and he comes down and he debates in the park. And I spoke to Joseph the Jew about the passage in Deuteronomy 18, and he read it in the Hebrew. Okay. And the word brother is always used in reference to Jews being the brothers of one another. That's not so true. when it says, one second, then Wait, you're going to have to take this up with Joseph. I'll, I'll, I'll give you the let evidence. Finish, the finish. Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you. Who is? Wait one second. Among your brothers. One yeah. second. From among you, from your countrymen, you shall listen to him. So you and your countrymen. Who is Moses speaking to? The Jews. Who are the you? The Jews. Who are the countrymen? The Jews. So who are we talking and looking for? We're looking for a Jew. Was Muhammad a Jew? He's just said no. No. So it's not Muhammad then. This is why I. This is why I explained. Uh, uh, Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, he have three sons, uh, uh, Yaqub and Ismail. 
uh, two sons and uh, Yaqub came uh, the, uh, the Israeli and from Prophet Muhammad والسلام, came from uh, from, uh, from Ismail which they are cousin brethren and this is why I say brethren and let me give you uh, the references that uh, Moses is like Prophet Muhammad just uh, I have nine nine evidence let me read it then you can comment whatever you like uh, first Moses uh, one second. let me talk about this then if you want to talk about this topic next week we can talk about it in detail detail we can talk about it again yeah absolutely yeah yeah we can talk but about I'm, I'm still waiting Muhammad for... in the Bible we'll talk no about no we topic. talked about I want to see Muhammad in the Injil, yeah, Injil okay, okay. Sorry, yeah. because Injil, you haven't got me Injil and Torah. all you've got is one question all you've got is one question let them people that he's talking about an Old I, I Testament remember. prophecy uh, let, let, I asked where is he in the New yeah, Testament? Yeah. Yes. Because that's what we're looking for. Let's talk about it in detail next week. This topic about Muhammad, the New Testament. Muhammad in the Injil and Torah. No, Muhammad in the Injil is the question Injil, I approached you. Yeah. Just the Injil. But you went to because, Torah. No, no, no. Wait, wait, no. You went to Torah. Because the logic, because the logic of that verse yeah. is talking about a figure in the Old Testament, but the New Testament identifies that prophet. That prophet that we agree is Deuteronomy 18:18 18, 18. in the book of Acts it identifies that person as Jesus very clearly and I read it to you. Okay. We disagree with that. Okay. Okay. We well, okay. Okay. The, the, what, the, 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 it identifies as Jesus of, as that assumption prophet. Assumption of the writer Abbas, of Acts. Abbas. Uh, yeah, I disagree with Abbas, that. Abbas, Abbas, of course he was going to uh, reject. Uh, okay, listen to we me. Talk about it next week. Uh, Moses had a father and mother. A prophet Muhammad has a father and mother. So did Jesus, my dad. Uh, Jesus <laughs> has only mother. He didn't have a father. Napoleon only had a, a, a mother and a father. Uh, do you, you want to interrupt me every time? No, I'm just saying okay. that Napoleon also fits uh, that description. Muhammad and Moses were both born in normal way, natural courses. Uh, but Jesus was created by the special miracle gospel of, of Saint, Saint Matthew, baby, yeah. one, a, one uh, 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 verse number 18. So was Napoleon. Okay. Muhammad and Moses married women and begat children. Uh, Jesus remained unmarried. So was Napoleon. Napoleon. Okay, uh, Moses, uh, Moses and Muhammad were accepted as a prophet by He's their got people. A Napoleon fetish. Please, please, please. Uh, uh, Muhammad and uh, and uh, Moses were uh, accepted as a prophet by their people. Also, they went uh, through hardship, but Jesus was rejected by his people. John 1, 11. Muhammad. That one's not Napoleon. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Muhammad and Moses both brought, brought a new law, but Jesus not uh, did it. Uh, brought a new law and Matthew 5, 17, 18. He can follow. Oh, so of did the Napoleon. Law. Okay. Yeah. Muhammad and Moses died natural death, but according to Christian, Jesus was killed on the cross. So did Napoleon. Uh, Napoleon, he didn't die on. <laughs> he, cross. Died a, he died of a natural died. death. But on the cross. He died of a natural cause. Yeah, yeah but uh, Jesus died on the cross. Yeah. So it's different. Uh, Muhammad and Moses both buried on earth. Jesus was uh, uh, raised to heaven. So is Napoleon. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Muhammad and Moses were both spiritual and national reader, uh, leader. Jesus was only spiritual reader. So is Napoleon. Muhammad and Moses were both victorious morally and spiritually. Jesus had a spiritual victory only. Maybe not Napoleon on that one. Therefore, <laughs> therefore, Jesus is not like Moses, but Muhammad is like Moses. Okay, now please, let me reply. Please. So, we went through all of these nine criteria. Yeah. yeah. Now, some of his criteria is just basically wrong, right? But, but my point of pointing out Napoleon, Napoleon, Napoleon is because if I can identify another figure in history that matches my brother Yahya's criterion, then that's pointing out that his criterion is nothing special. If I can point out that Napoleon meets his criteria, then his criteria is useless to deciding in what way is Jesus like Moses or is Mohammed like Moses. But some of his criteria is wrong. Can we just go back to your criteria? Because yeah. I want to correct you on a couple of things. Okay. Yeah, well, he just called him One brother, second. Like, and you, hey, and we're, we're, person, he's Muslim. Yeah, but we're brother, brothers in brother. humanity. Brothers in humanity. So. He said that Jesus didn't bring a new law. Yeah, he said that. But Jesus said, on this day I give you a new commandment. Can I say something? One, no, no, let me finish. Because, no, hold on one second. Because Jesus no, said... No, no, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. sorry. Right. So, yeah, yeah. So, the fact of the matter is, I mean, bearing in mind... Please, please. Bearing in mind that Yah Yah himself, his name is a derivative of Yahweh. Yeah. So even his own name speaks of Yahweh. Yeah. 
Yeah. Even his own name speaks of he Judaism <laughs> and Christianity, yeah, yeah. not of Islam. But, yeah, yeah. yeah sure. Your criterion, apart from having some errors in it, yeah, let's look at the ways in which Jesus and Moses are similar. Okay. Moses was a savior to his people. Jesus was a savior to his people. They don't call Muhammad the savior. Muhammad is a prophet, the final messenger. But according to Islamic theology, there's, there's no savior. Moses freed his people from the bondage of slavery. Jesus freed his people from the bondage of slavery. Moses spoke and saw God face to face. God is invisible. God, How did he see it? Moses spoke because he was speaking to the sun. Moses spoke to God face to face. Jesus spoke to God face to face. So that means now, two gods. now, bearing in mind, bearing in mind, the, the criterion used by Yahya, um, Yahya, Yahya. Yahya is equivalent to let Napoleon be the fulfillment of prophecy. Ah, okay. The ways that I have described Moses and Jesus are special and particular to Moses and Jesus. So let me get this clear. Moses spoke to God face to face. Jesus speaks to God face to face. Does Muhammad speak to God face to face? No, because... Good. Because, because I could just... Uh, no, One, no, Jesus, coming. Jesus so said, David, Jesus this, said, this, don't this, think this, I come this, to abolish this, or destroy this, the law and the prophet. Uh, Jesus, he didn't come with a new law for the people because he said anyone who remove even a dot from the law, he will be called the least in the kingdom of God. S second, uh, God, according to the Bible, he lived in an uh, unapproachable light, which he, is the screen from his like take away this smoke please uh, and uh, uh, no one have seen God or, or hear uh, his voice according to the Bible and no one can see God and live and uh, there's contradiction in the Bible about God God cannot be seen and there's another ver verses saying that even uh, Jacob he fa see God face to face and he was able to live and uh, and when when Moses asked God to see he show only his back and his glory but he didn't see him face to face because even in, in uh, the Old Testament it, God it is invisible eternal immortal ever living and no one can see or can uh, okay yeah, yeah, yeah let me reply let me reply. reply in the book of Exodus it clearly says that Moses spoke directly with God. He spoke the direct oh, directly with God. Yeah, he spoke, but he that didn't he saw, see him. That he saw his back parts. Did he not see God? I, I, no, not his face. Not his face, but he saw God, right? Uh, he saw, uh, like, he saw... Did actually, he see his back parts? Actually, what he see, he yeah, sees the right. fire. He didn't see so, God. So, but, uh, as the, I, I'm, I'm so, going along with the yeah, Bible. Yeah, 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 yeah. Listen, listen, listen. Listen to what I got to say. Okay. So in Yahya, in his statement, Yahya's words, he didn't, Moses didn't see his face, he saw his back. So he saw God. Is this according to the Bible? Yahya, just calm down. I'm coming down. Jesus sees God. How? I'm going to explain. In John chapter 1, yeah. it speaks, it speaks of Jesus. It says this. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, in the Greek, the word, the words in the Greek that we translate as the word was with God is Kailogos proston theon. Okay. One second, I'm giving you an education in Greek. I, I hear. Proston theon literally means in Greek face to face. Now, Jesus says also this. Can I respond to this part? One second. Just let me respond to this, uh, this part, what? then you can carry on. Okay, go on, respond to that part. Uh, and John, I don't believe in John because uh, it's contradict in Genesis 1, 1, 31, where God, there, there's no mention for the word and the, uh, the spirit, if you want to say that the word is, is Jesus, uh, it was uh, mentioning uh, this, the spirit of God was hovering over the water. 
and God creates such and such 31 times without Jesus being there. Great. Yeah. So, so no. whoever says the so word, allow me to reply. actually the word is... So the allow me to reply. No, just one second. You, you said on that it. point, but you're talking about something no, else no, now. Uh, no, no, yeah. I'm point. still... Please, please no, no, the word is the spoken word of God for Jesus to come to existing to be. And that's where the, but he came to be by the will of God. Okay, allow me to read right. So, so the fact of the matter is, Yaya's response to my evidence is just to say I don't believe it. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm, don't, sorry, don't. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but that is still what John says. John, John not says, Jesus. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let, allow me to finish what I was saying because you interrupted me, remember? You interrupted me. The Greek says, Kylogos prostontheon. The Logos was face to face with God. So the Son, because the, God, the chapter one is clearly identifying Jesus Christ as the Word, was face to face with the Father. He saw the Father. And Moses saw the Father. But as uh, Yahya has just said, sorry, as Yah, sorry, yes. Moses saw God. He saw Jesus in the Theophany. So. Yahya has already admitted that Muhammad never saw God. So in this way, Muhammad is not like Moses, but Jesus is like Moses. Perfect. I'll finish my point. Jesus also said, you have given me, now Father glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you, you before the world was. Thank you very much. So in the very beginning, before there was anything else, Jesus said he was there with the Father. Before Adam, before the earth, before the heavens, before the angels, before the prophets, before the books, God, Jesus was there. Jesus was there with the Father. Now, let me finish my point. I'm landing, Yaya. Yeah, yeah. I'm landing. I'm landing. So, my point to you is this. When Yahya was given his criterion, he gave nine criterion, some of which were in error. And I never got around to that bit. I will do. But the fact of the matter is I pointed out that at least seven of his criteria could also apply to Napoleon Bonaparte. So this means that they are a useless criteria. It is far more profound to say that Jesus is like Moses because he spoke directly with God than it is to say he had a mother and a father who were human beings or that he died of a natural death. These are irrelevant points. Everyone in humanity is born of a mother and father. Everyone of humanity dies except, a natural death. That, so Adam it's totally irrelevant. Adam and Jesus wasn't born from member mother and father. Jesus and Moses spoke to God directly. Muhammad did not. I, okay. So uh, th that mean that mean wait wait. The, no, he didn't. You, you just uh, you just confirm your Bible is co corrupted. And I say why? Because can the question is about wait, wait, prophecy wait, of Muhammad wait, wait. in the Bible no, okay, let's say, and the injil at that. Wait, wait. Let's say Muhammad is false. J just le let's address this uh, this point. Uh, the Bible create confusion. No, yeah, yeah, you're changing. You're changing no, no, the topic. No, no, no. Uh, because you're changing because the topic, yeah, yeah. No, the topic is about whether Muhammad is found in the Injil. Stick to the topic. May, may I? No, this is why I don't like debating you because we have a topic and you just go through your script every time. That's all that you do. You come with a notepad and every time we debate Yaya, okay, okay. all he does is try to go through his script. The topic is, is Muhammad in the Injil? Stop, stop shouting. I will, let me reply to you. You said Jesus say God face to face. Yes. Is it? Okay. Why then? Why then? And John and John 118, Exodus 33, 20. Uh, 1 Timothy 6, to, uh, 16. John 5, 36, 38. Timothy 6, 15, 16, John 4, 24 said nobody can see God because God is a spirit. So how would Jesus see God and God cannot be seen according to Exodus 33, 23, Exodus 33, 11, Genesis 32, 30. No one can see God face to face. And here Isaiah, Isaiah 6, 5, my eyes have seen the King of the Lord. That means in the same Bible, God can be seen in some verses, 
God cannot be seen as a person. So let me answer, I can answer this question. And this is why, brothers and sisters, Christians read the Bible from a Trinitarian perspective. When it says that God cannot be seen, it is speaking of the Father who no man has seen. But Jesus Christ, who is also God, is the one who appears in every theophany of the Old Testament. He is the one who is the very image of God, who is the very representation of God. So much so that Jesus himself says, he who has seen me has seen the Father. And the action because, and miracles. Because, 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 yes, say it, say it. listen, listen, listen. Let John 18, should come to John chapter one, the yeah. one where you said no yeah, okay. one has seen God at any time. Yeah. Listen to what it says. Okay. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth were realized through Jesus Christ. Yeah. No one has seen God at any time. Except? The only begotten God who is in the bosom of the Father. So the, the, so so the Son, who is God, reveals the Father. That is what the Bible teaches. But our discussion, Yahya, is not about the Trinity. It is about is Muhammad in the Injil. Where is Muhammad in the Injil? Just responded to you, I will show you. Just responded to you. This then all the prophet and messenger, including Jesus, who teach the Lord our God is one, they are wrong because the Father is God, and the Son is God, and the Holy Spirit is God, and they are three and one, but they can sit next to each other because the, the Father sits on the throne. The it's Father, not about the Trinity. It's the about Father, where is where is the Father sit on the throne, and Jesus sit on 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 off topic. Off topic. As why always, you, why you, Yaya's off topic. Why you are uh, Has anyone ever watched a debate with why, Yaya why you keep, where he sticks to the topic? Why you keep <laughs> ever? Me? Why you I will pay good me? money to watch camera? Yaya stick yeah. to the topic. Yeah. Why you keep interrupt me? You so you why you both. look at me? Look at me. Look yeah, at me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, you tell me I interrupt. Yes, and you tell me to shut up. I shut up. Why you keep interrupt me? And I'm talking about the core of the belief of Christian and. And, and, and Islam. Okay, because it's not the topic. The, is it, uh, yeah, it's not the topic, but the, the confusion. Thank you. The it's not the topic. Okay, yeah, yeah, you've gone off the topic, so let's stop. Let's okay, stop, stop. Because let's stop. Because you're not on the topic. Okay, we stop. Yeah, wrap up, wrap up. So I, I'm going to give a wrap up. All right. Why does any of this matter? Why, Bob? It's simple. Because the Quran makes a statement of fact. It says that the followers of Muhammad were able to find Muhammad in the New Testament yeah. and as you saw the moment I question the Muslims they don't want to show me where Muhammad is mentioned in the New Testament okay. they want to go to the Old Testament with Abbas okay. and Yahya he uses I'll give Yahya credit he tries to show Muhammad in the New Testament but his argument falls down no, flat no, no, no. This is a wrap up. We're not continuing the discussion. I would like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. like to wrap up. Right. I would like so, to wrap up. Yeah. The fact of the matter is, if the Muslims cannot show me where Muhammad is mentioned in the New Testament, yeah. that means the Quran has an error in it. Yeah. It has a lie in it. It has a myth in it. And the Quran says, if this were from any other than Allah, people like me would find contradictions many. in it many and we do <laughs> which means that the Quran is false it is not from God and Muslims therefore need to look again at the claims of Jesus because the claims of Muhammad have been proven evidently false yeah, you have the last word the Prophet Muhammad was mentioned in the Old Testament. You have Isaiah 42, 117. Not the New Testament. Well, well, hold on, hold on. I, I didn't interrupt you. I didn't interrupt you. You have so Song of Song, please, please. Song of Song 516. You have an act. No, this is uh, 3, 22, 26. Hold on. You have it in Geometry 18, 18, 19. You have Isaiah 28, 10, 11, 42, 4, 11. Uh, and J New Testament, 
John 16, 5, 16, the counselor, you have, you have a Matthew 15, 24, as, as well as geometry 18, 18, which I mentioned. Let's look at Acts. Acts 3, 22, because he's back on topic. Okay, okay. So Never mind, you wrap up, I wrap up, uh, forget about it. Acts 3. All right, wrap up or okay, that's fine. What, just like, leave it with me. Acts 3, 22, 26. You can go now. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, yeah, yeah. yeah Thank you, okay. yeah, yeah. No problem, but I want to hear. No, no, Acts 3, no, no, I don't want to go. 22, 26. Acts 3, 22, 22, 22, 22 to 26. Okay, let's have a look. Wow, Bob. Men of Israel, listen to these words. Jesus the Nazarene, a man attested to you by God with miracles and wonders and signs which God performed through him in our midst. So he's not God. Just as you yourselves know. Does this sound like a prophecy of Muhammad? No. Oh. This man delivered over by the predetermined plan and foreknowledge of God, you nailed to a cross by the hands of godless men and put him to death. But God raised him up, putting an end to the agony of death, since it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says of him, that's Jesus Christ, I saw the Lord always in my presence, for he is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. That doesn't sound like Muhammad to me. It sounds like Jesus Christ. And Yahya, in his script, just gave you the reference <laughs> saying that it was a prophecy of Muhammad. So don't believe the script of yeah. Yahya. God bless you, Yahweh. We love you, Yahweh. Yeah, 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 yeah. We love you, Yahweh. Yeah. again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I will leave uh, the, uh, the comment Sorry? section Ashia. all Ashia. the answers for all of them. Ashia, is that in the Quran? No, no, it's in the Bible. Ashia. Uh, we're talking, no, the question. One second, bro. You have the answer. No, you, you, didn't, you don't even know the question. I know. If What's Muhammad, the question? If Muhammad is in the... In the that is not the question. Uh, yeah. well, what was that? Yeah. Exactly. The actual question that I started when I was speaking with Abbas and speaking with this guy yeah. is the Quran says that Muhammad can be found in the New Testament, in the Injil. So I'm, the question is, show me. Show me in the New Testament where it mentions Muhammad. That's the question. So now you can go back to Google. Yeah, Ashia, Ashia. No, the New Testament, not the Old Testament. The New Testament, I don't know. It's called the Injil. Where is Muhammad in the Injil? In the Injil. This is the era of the Holy Spirit. JC, I'm going very soon. Yeah. Have you got something from the New Testament? There is an um, there is an engine. It's called Benava. In English? I don't know in English, but then we're stuck. You, you Christian, you, you, you I'm sorry. Book, you don't believe which, it which? anymore. No, no, no. Where, where, which passage do you want me to go to? You took it out. No, no. Which passage do you want me to go to? Wait, wait, wait. Because if it's not, then the Quran is wrong. The Quran is in error. The Quran is making a claim that you can find Muhammad in the Injil. If you can't find Muhammad in the Injil, then the Quran is wrong. It's in error. The Quran doesn't come from the Holy Spirit. Agreed. Well done, Uncle. For the first time ever, yeah. I've heard the uncle say something I agree with. Yeah, first on, time in history. I've been here for three years. I finally agree with him on something. The Quran is not from the Holy Spirit. I totally agree. Have you got any? Have you got any verse? Muhammad doesn't know anything about the creator, the Holy Spirit. When you say Muhammad was a prophet of the Holy Spirit, bring the Quran and open one prophecy. Only one not in truth. One prophecy in the Quran. Yeah, but I really need to go. Brother, can I suggest something? Or do you, will, can, or is it likely that you will come back next week? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, come, come back next week, come and grab me, yeah, and we'll talk about it. Yeah. Okay, have a good day. God bless you, bro. God bless you. So, guys, ladies and gentlemen, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, when I was talking with Abbas, Abbas took me to the, the Gospel of John, where Jews went to ask uh, John the Baptist three questions. Are you the Christ? Are you Elijah or are you that prophet? Now, there's multiple ways that that passage can be interpreted. 
One way is that there are three different questions being asked about three different people. Another way is that they're asking the same question twice. And they're just sort of kind of like, are you the prophet, Elijah? Are you that one who's coming before? I personally am of the opinion that when they go, are you Elijah? Are you that prophet? They're just double downing on the first question about him being Elijah. And the, the fact of the matter is, the fact of the matter is, I think that that's how that passage should be interpreted. However, even if we say that it's three separate questions about three separate people, it doesn't mean that Abbas's interpretation is correct. Because in Judaism, first century Judaism and present day Judaism, the last figure to come is the Messiah, not a prophet. So if Christ is the Messiah, then that means there are no other prophets to come. That's the point that, that Muslims never wrestle with, is that Jews believe that Christ is the final figure of history, the final great figure, a cosmological figure that will establish God's reign on earth and reign as God on earth. That is their view of the Messiah. That means that you don't need a prophet to come after such a person. So even if the question is of three persons, that prophet, if it's a separate person from Elijah and the Christ, must be someone who comes before the Christ, not someone who comes after Christ. The first century Jews got lots wrong. They didn't believe that Jesus was the Messiah. Muslims do, Christians do. They didn't believe that Elijah was the one to come before the Messiah. But he, well, he's the one that is, sorry, yeah. Elijah was understood by the Jews to return and come and prepare the way of Yahweh prepare the way of the Messiah and John the Baptist is said to come in the spirit of Elijah preparing the way of the Lord Isn't that like a so it is a metaphor exactly Elijah becomes a metaphor for the prophet who is going to prepare the way for the Messiah and Christ is that Messiah the Gospels say that the one that is coming and I'm going to read it from the book of Mark because often Muslims here, particularly Muslims at the corner, use a false argument that the Christology of Mark is lower than that of John. But listen to these words. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah, the prophet, Behold, I send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way the voice of one crying in the in the wilderness make ready the way of Yahweh make his path straight so the Messiah the one who is coming is Yahweh that is what it says yep it says right here make ready the way of the Lord that's from the Old Testament we translate Lord, we translate Lord by custom because we are speaking in English so we translate it as Lord by custom but in the Hebrew that would be Yahweh. Okay. Yes it's a translation, surprise surprise we're talking in English so it's a translation. That doesn't prove anything bro. So, so, so apparently the brother says that translations are not trustworthy so you've got to ask why do muslims hand out translations of the quran ah, so okay, there you go nice one the, the, I, I am often baffled by the <laughs> cognitive dissonance of muslims in the park <laughs> i mean it's absolutely baffling oh it's a translation of the hebrew into english okay. but then it's a translation of the english from the arabic yeah. but when the muslims do it it's okay it's dawa when the christians do it it's false ah, okay. what <laughs> utter nonsense anyway that's the wrap-up guys thank you Bob that's the wrap-up thank you Bob. the prophet who prepares the way of Yahweh yeah. there you go now I'm done okay. have a good day next week thank next you week. thank you thank you guys thank you guys